Hi, uh, I'm Marcin. Uh, I work at Facebook as a production engineer on operating systems team. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you about struggles and our adventures that we had with uh, running RPM based software at scale, at Facebook scale. So uh, I'm going to start with a brief um, explanation how we run our systems, uh, because that's kind of a uh, introduction to why we are bringing some problems upon ourselves and why those, those problems are something we choose to live with. So we're running CentOS 7 uh, for quite some time now. Uh, we used to run CentOS 6 and the migration was a uh, um, journey of its own, but it forced, it, it was great because it forced so many, uh, so many people and uh, so many teams to actually rethink what they're doing and uh, refresh our uh, deployments a little, a little bit, so it was a nice forcing, forcing function to uh, go ahead, reach out, and uh, work with people that might be uh, stuck to uh, stuck with uh, uh, Sense Six if they they didn't have a better reason to to upgrade. So we ran Sense Six, uh, Sense Seven, sorry, and uh, we're running Chef. Uh, we're running Chef every half an hour. And that's pretty important because uh, our our systems and our chef uh, uh, chef code base is designed in a way that uh, it either fails or succeeds. As in, uh, there is no uh, inconsistent state in the in the middle. If anything can, it's if something cannot happen, as in uh, file cannot be written or certain chef uh, recipe cannot be applied, it's going to fail hard, it's not going to skip over the errors. Uh, and that host is going to be flagged as, uh, well, not compliant, not succeeding chef, and the owner will be eventually notified. Uh, and we're running pretty often, and the velocity of changes uh, to the chef code base are, is, is significant. We have few hundred engineers, at the very least, writing chef recipes. And they're all installing packages all the time. Uh, they're all maintaining and owning their own pieces of infrastructure. Uh, there are common uh, recipes, and there are common uh, building blocks that operating systems uh, or security teams maintain. But um, those are just the common software. Uh, it's, it's up to the teams to actually own their own uh, deployment uh, pipeline. But the, the common thing is that they all need to be running Chef, or every, every single host needs to be running Chef on a regular basis. And if it doesn't, if, it, for example, someone uh, stops Chef on a host or, the, the, or Chef starts failing, it's going to get flagged and eventually it's going to get escalated and depending on how the team wants to handle it, it's going to either be reprovisioned or there are, like, there are a few flows that can happen there. Um, so that, that gives us um, certain guarantees about hosts. They need to be, they will be either in a consistent state or completely broken. We can easily reason about what happened and, uh, and have a like, very high level view or of where the fleet is at. So uh, with that comes uh, uh, another, another, and this, this one is actually pretty important to, to RPM, another caveat that we're running every half an hour. So there might be cases that if some, something takes too long, uh, or for example, RPM, like huge RPM transaction, or something gets uh, stuck, or, or, or the host is starved uh, for resources, uh, there might be cases that processes are going to get killed and, um, and another chef run will come along and try to clean up. And that ties to the, the fact that we're, that, that's, that's hard, those are harsh conditions to actually run software. Uh, you, might, you will have hosts that are starved for, for, for resources. You will have hosts that are, there's barely any IO to, to share. You will have hosts that you won't be scheduled on the CPUs because there's just like so much things going on. And um, there will be cases that RPM uh, and the ARM are going to get killed uh, mid-transaction uh, in very different, uh, very, very, very uh, random uh, uh, circumstances. 
And that, unfortunately, <laughs> there are very few pieces of software that can handle that. Uh, and uh, it, we know that's not necessarily the, the right approach to do this, but we choose to kind of live with it. And uh, that causes some uh, some problems, like uh, zero byte files, they will happen. Like someone pulls it also, like uh, apart from what I mentioned, there are cases of uh, automation pulling the plug on the host and trying to bring it up afterwards because of different reasons, ha hardware upgrades or stuff like that, or host being unresponsive or whatever. So um, duplicate packages, missing shared libraries, uh, there will be different kinds of random brokenness across the fleet. And it, it won't be major. It will be the long tail of just random things that happened. And that's, uh, that's usually fine, because we don't really think about hosts in terms of uh, like single units. We, we treat them as, uh, as cattle, not as our pets. Uh, so, uh, in some cases, like uh, even logging to a host, like manually logging to a specific host in a tier, will flag it to like uh, to being re to be reprovisioned in a few weeks because that one was touched by a human in some way. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a good pattern to have. It works, but uh, it only works on a certain scale. You need to you need to think in ter in terms of uh, hundreds thousands of machines. Uh, so. Uh, we basically uh, we basically treat YAM and RPM in a very very bad way, uh, and we have those uh, those um, um, guarantees that we need to uh, kind of fulfill. So historically, we try to very aggressively if something bad happens, we will, we try to aggressively uh, run rebuild DB on the on the RPM database, and we had something called RPM hook, which was basically running. Uh, rebuild DB on uh, every single occasion, but that generally caused more problems than it uh, than it uh, fixed. Because there will be there will be like we had we've seen cases of hundreds uh, RPM or YAM processes waiting for a lock for a lock waiting for the DB to be flushed or uh, there will be inconsistencies and uh, the actual rebuild wasn't. And cannot be really prioritized in a, in any any sane way, so it was more of a large hammer that we tried to apply for for quite some time. Um, so uh, that cost like if 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 RPMDB or YAM or anything uh, s related to them got corrupted, uh, it, we had cases of shared libraries disappearing and basically. Core software to the to the host being not uh, not uh, not usable any, usable anymore, and that's something that's pretty hard to remediate in in an automated manner. So we had eventually we had hundreds of hosts uh, or thousands of hosts lagging behind on updates, and that ended up in someone's queue as a human had to manually take a look and uh, whether. Uh, Send that host to being reprovisioned, or try to poke at it manually and see what might have happened there. And those are those were very uh, labor intensive, as in there are no two two similar breakages like that. Uh, there are random things that can that can happen if you pull the plug or you kill minus nine things. So uh, over years, we d developed something called DCRPM. Uh, which was originally uh, a C++ uh, for some reason uh, uh, binary that tried to um, um, detect and correct uh, RPM uh, and YAM databases. It, it tried to exercise all the indexes and uh, and uh, figure out what can be done, like release logs from RPM or YAM kill uh, strangled, strangling processes and and stuff that stuff like that it's uh, <laughs> it works on Linux and OS X and it works on OS X uh, because we did port RPM to OS X few years ago uh, surprisingly and it, it works it's uh, it's definitely a step up from uh, whatever OS X has uh, and running so we're running uh, OS X in production because um, testing of iOS apps needs to happen somewhere. It needs to be native, so there are, there are, there are sizable deployments of that. 
for that very for, for, uh, for that very purpose. Um, so this ERPM runs on every chef run and tries to exercise database, try to check for sanity. It's open source. It's it's uh, it's been rewritten to Python by um, in the beginning of this year, I think, and uh, that significantly improved it. Uh, as in, it was easier to maintain, and it there was no really a good need for it being a C plus plus binary because it's more of a shell out to, to various uh, various commands that exercise the, the databases. And, uh, but we, we went a step further from there. So um, RPM has, a, has support for SQLite as the, as the backend, and we tried that. Uh, but it was a little more resilient, but at the same time, it, it was order of magnitude slower. Every transaction, every single uh, query was just slow, and we have quite a we we have quite a lot of packages on most hosts uh, that might be much more than normal workload is. Uh, so it was just not something that we can go with. But I be believe beginning of this year, uh, new uh, new databases have been introduced, namely MDB and LMDB, which are in file. Um, um, self-contained, uh, one is purpose-built, the other one is general purpose uh, databases. And uh, But those are n very much, ex like from what we gathered, those were very much experimental at this point. Uh, and uh, I believe we might be one of the bigger deployments experimenting with it. And uh, we ended up backporting plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, RPM-related tools to Sense 7 to actually work with uh, uh, to have the right versions of uh, of RPM to to, to understand the, the new backends, uh, we generally publish all our CentOS 7 backports to to GitHub. So those are not quite yet there, but will be will be there too. Um, and so far, uh, have, we haven't rolled it out uh, widely to the fleet yet. We, we have a lim relatively limited deployment, but from from what from our uh, limited experience, which is quite sizable, maybe for for general world uh, uh, in general wor world terms, it's uh, it's pretty great actually. So. Uh, we tried to break the the new uh, backends, as in in artificial uh, conditions, and that was already much harder than breaking BDB. Um, and uh, so far, so good. So we're going to be experimenting with this further. Uh, we're we're going to be rolling out, rolling it out to the fleet uh, in probably in the upcoming months. Uh, we haven't yet decided which one to use because both are in file, bo both are self-contained. Uh, we're going to be probably uh, basing that on the performance and stability of both. Uh, whichever wins uh, is going to be our 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 choice. Um, we haven't uh, rolled out. We haven't been using DNF uh, extensively. There are some some cases that uh, we do use it, but that's more of a special. Uh, kind of use cases. So after after we we deal with uh, uh, with the new new backend rollouts, we'll probably start thinking of uh, going DNF. Uh, right now, it might be a little tricky because uh, uh, we had a hard time building the newest DNF with the new backends and making both understand each other. But at the same time, we're we're pretty excited about the performance, n not really performance, but uh, stability wins that this will, uh, will give us. Because uh, um, we cannot really easily improve the conditions for, for RPM to, to work at that scale, as in it's going to get killed. It's going to have, it's going to be starved for resources. Uh, but having it as a self-contained backend, uh, helps quite a lot. So it probably won't be perfect. There will be still cases of, of corruption, and uh, we'll still need to rebuild it occasionally. Uh, but uh, it, if from what we figured, by now, it's, it's much, much better. Uh, one more point. Um, we could be, um, and as I mentioned, we could be rebuilding it much, much more aggressively, but that doesn't really help. So we need something that uh, is going to respond better to our treatments. And that's pretty much all I have. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm 
happy to answer. All right, thank you.